I installed a 500 watt gener wind generator, which actually worked well for a couple weeks, and then it quit. And I got to thinking, you know, that should have lasted longer than that. I must have done something wrong. Or it's faulty equipment. Uh, from everything I've checked, I think I did something wrong. Because I remember when I was hooking it up, I accidentally arced a wire. And the instructions explicitly state, you can't reverse the polarity, but I didn't do that. Uh, the battery was disconnected. Uh, I didn't have it connected to a battery. But it comes with the wires kind of pre-skinned, and I pulled the plastic ends off all the wires. So I had five bare copper wires during the installation. And while I was installing it, the wind generator started turning. So it was attempting to generate electricity, and one of the green wires actually touched the red wire. And it was a little spark. Not a big deal, but electronics are extremely sensitive to stuff like that. It's called the spark of death. Even though it didn't fry the controller right away, it failed shortly thereafter. Reading the instructions, it's got a set of indicator lights that show you that it's hooked to the battery, whether it's generating power or the brake is on because it's got overspeed protection. And mine does not have any lights on and all the connections are good, which tells me she's fried. So I buy a new wind generator controller. You buy them by size, you know, 400, 500, 600 watt. You, you know, they got a range to them. So you buy the replacement. They're not expensive. Thankfully, it's only $35. But then you say, how do I do this and not mess this up again? And boat yoga is involved as usual. Let me show you where this goes. I have a racer. So it has quarter berths, bunks to the port and starboard as you come down the steps and I installed the wind generator all the way in the back of a quarter berth, the controller. So when you get back there, it's very difficult to work. So having five bare wires at a time, which I did the first time, was the cause of the failure because I arced them. And let me show you what I'm doing, putting the new controller in to prevent that. Here is the new wind controller. So how do you get five wires connected and never cross touch them, get a spark and kill your controller? Ha! Go ahead and expose the wires and put crimp connectors on them. Now they are shielded from touching anything. You can see the connection, the conductive surface is up inside the plastic protective housing. Now, I've also got some uh, solder seal connectors, but this is in the dry. It's not exposed to salt water or anything like that. So I'm using uh, just automotive style crimp connectors. So let's get this replaced. Let's hopefully the lights light up. Everything works and we'll be back in business. There we go. By putting the connectors on the wires on the controller first, we were able to connect this new charge controller up without arcing any wires, the spark of death. And we've got a green light indicating the battery's hooked up, everything's functioned properly. Now let the wind blow!